example problem with Kirchhoff's circuit laws. Some circuits are too complicated to merely be solved using parallel and series combinations of resistors. Then we have to resort to Kirchhoff circuit laws. Um, as hopefully you've uh, read about in a book or heard about in a mini lecture, the two laws are that around a closed loop, the sum of the potentials is zero. So it means we have to get back to the same potential that we started with. The second law is that at a junction, the current coming in equals the current coming out. So we have here a situation where a top branch has 30 ohm resistor, middle branch 40 ohms, then a battery of potential difference 7 volts, and internal to that battery, a resistance of 1 ohm, the bottom branch 20 ohm resistor in series with a 3 volt battery, and again a 1 ohm internal resistance. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify here. The 40 and the 1 ohm are in series, the 20 and the 1 ohm are in series, so let's redraw this with a uh, just one resistor in each branch of the circuit. So again we'd start with the 30 ohm. The middle branch should now have a 41 ohm and then our battery. And the long bar of the battery is the positive uh, part of the battery. And then a 21 ohm resistor. And again, the longest bar is the positive terminal of the battery. So I label these 41 ohms and down here 21 ohms. 3 volts and 7 volts. So there's our circuit. Let's apply the uh, uh, Kirchhoff's laws to this. So I'm going to go around the top loop. I'm going to start here at point A and as I go around I'll account for potential gains and potential losses for each resistor and, and the battery. To do this, before I can do this, I have to guess at the direction of the current in each branch of the circuit. So this top branch, I'm going to claim that there's a current I1, and I'm actually going to let the current go this way. It does not matter what direction you draw the current. Uh, but I'm going to claim I1 starts at this node and terminates at this node. So I1 is existing in this top wire, and the wires here are ideal. They have zero resistance. Uh, we have uh, I1 to the left through the 30 ohm resistor. Where current comes in, this conventional current is what we're using, um, where current comes in, I label that positive, and where current goes out of the resistor, I label that side of the resistor negative. In the middle branch here, I'm going to claim that I2 runs off to the right. So I2 starts here, goes through the 41 ohm, through the battery like this. So I2 is coming in this side of the resistor. I'm going to label that side positive and where the resistor goes out, that's minus. The battery, the long terminal is plus, the short uh, bar is, is minus. Down here for the bottom branch, I'm going to claim that I3 runs this way. I3 starts at this node and ends at this node. I2 starts here and ends here. I1 starts here and ends here. And again, you can, um, as long as you're consistent with future work, you cannot draw the current incorrectly such that this method will not work. So I3 comes in to the left side of the 21 ohm, I'll call that positive, going out there. And again, negative terminal of the battery and the positive is alongside. So let's do the top loop and examine the uh, potentials. So as we come into this top loop, we have current I1 going the other way, and I'm going to go around the loop in this direction. I come from a minus to a plus, so that's going to be a gain in potential as I go through here. And of course we can calculate that potential difference across the resistor by multiplying the current in the resistor times the resistance value. So we're going to have a plus 30 I1. The current value is I1 and the uh, uh, resistance value is 30. And what I need to pay attention to to know whether to write plus or minus here is do I go from the minus side of the resistor to the plus side? 
and I'm doing so, so I write a plus side, plus 30I1. The plus has been uh, put on this resistor based on how the current is directed. The current is coming into the right side, it's leaving the left side. Where the current comes in, that's the positive side of the resistor. That's what we label, uh, positive side here. So I'm going to continue on through here, and I'm at this node, I'm going to choose to go through the battery. When I go through the battery, that's a plus 7 volts from minus to plus. As I come through the 41 ohm resistor, I look at the labeling here. Do you think it should be plus 41 I2 or minus 41 I2? Again, I'm going around the loop in this direction. I'm, I hit this end of the resistor first, and then I come through here back to point A. So I'm going from the minus to the plus side of the res resistor. So I write plus 41 I2 equals zero. Well, as I say, these currents can be drawn in any direction as long as you're consistent now in writing the equations. A plus, a plus, a plus equals zero. Hopefully it's obvious to you that when we solve for the i's, at least one of these will be a negative number. And when that situation occurs, you come back to your drawing and you understand that you chose the incorrect direction for the current. That did not stop you from using this method, but it means the current is actually going in the other direction compared to what you drew, the conventional current. Um, so let's do another loop here. So for uh, loop number two, let's again start at point A, but let's go clear around the kind of circumference, if you want to call it, on the outside of everything here. We're going to ignore the middle branch and calculate the potential rise and fall as we proceed around the outside of this circuit. So I'll call it outside. So again, I'm going to start at point A, and again, I'm going to come this way, and then we'll come down through here. Um, but again, it's a plus 30I1. Now I come down here. I'm going from the plus to the minus on this battery, so that'll be a minus 3 volts is the change in potential. And then as I come through the 21 ohm resistor, I'm coming through this way, so that's going to be a plus 21I3. equals zero. So that's two equations. How many unknowns do I have? I have I1, I have I2, I have I3. So we need a third equation. And now we use um, at A, at this junction A, let's take a look at what the currents are doing. I've got I1 coming into the current, into that node, and I have I2 and I3 leaving the node. So the current coming in equals the current going out. And I could have written this I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. The sum of the current here is zero. Um, but it's kind of natural this way. The current coming in equals the current that goes out. And now I use algebra techniques. I've got a system of equations here. The first thing I'm going to do is every place that I1 appears in these first two equations, I'm going to substitute I2 plus I3. Then we'll get rid of, of that variable. So this first equation, I'm going to substitute in for I1. So I have 30 I2 plus I3 plus 7 plus 41 I2 and let's go ahead and distribute through here. So 30I2 plus 30I3 plus 7 plus 41I2 equals 0. We have some like terms here, the I2 terms. So 30 and 41. So I get 71I2 plus 30I3 plus 7 equals 0. For the second equation, again, I have I1 be multiplied by 30. We're going to substitute I2 and I3. So 30, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute right away. As we get, it's the same calculation that was done above. The I1 is being replaced with I2 times plus I3. Each of these terms has to be multiplied by 30. So we obtain this, and then we've got minus 3 and we have plus 21 I3 
And simplifying this, uh, again, I have a common, oops, equals zero. I have a common um, variable I3 in two different terms, so we're going to add up their coefficients. So I'll have 30 I2 plus 51 I3 minus 3 equals zero. So we've equation one and equation two now just have two unknowns. And what algebra technique would you like to use here? You could solve for I2 in one of these and then substitute into the other, but I kind of prefer to create the same magnitude coefficient on one of the variables, but with opposite sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this equation, multiply all the way through by minus 30. And I'm going to multiply all the way through here. What do you think I should multiply by? I want to create the same number in front of I2, but with opposite sign. Well, I have 30 times 71 up here with a negative. Here I want plus, but I still want 30 times 71. And I have to multiply every term up here by minus 30, every term here by 71. So go ahead, and I've done this in advance, not doing this on the fly. But equation 1, after we distribute the minus 30 through here, becomes minus 2130 I2 minus 30 times plus 30. We get minus 900 I3 minus 30 times plus 7. We get minus 210. Equation 2, as I multiply 71 through here, we're going to get plus 2130 I2. 71 times 51, use a calculator, 3621 times I3, and 71 times minus 3 is minus 213 equals 0. Now we add these two equations. When these two equations add, we add up like terms. I'm going to have a 0 in front of I2. And here, 3621 minus 900. Um, that calculation will leave us with 27, 21, I3. Two minus terms, these numbers add together. 423 equals 0. So add 423 to both sides. Divide by 27, 21. And I obtain that, oh, I'm off the chart here, very sorry about that. But I obtain I3 equals 0 0.155. keep forgetting the limited view of my webcam. Um, but to recap, minus 30 distribute through the first equation. And that produced minus 30 times 71 is minus 2130. The minus 30 times plus 30 minus 900. The minus 30 times 7 minus 210. For the second equation, distributing 71 through a plus 2130 I2. 71 times 51, 3621 times I3. 71 times minus 3, minus 213. Add the two equations. The I2 terms drop out. They combine to 0 for the coefficient. And we get 2721, the net there, and minus 423. Solve for I3, and we get this number, 0.115 amps. We're using volts and ohms, so we get amps for the, uh, the current. And now we can come back to uh, either this um, first equation or the second one. We know the value for I3, and we can calculate I2. So I'm going to choose this second equation, 30I2 plus 51I3 minus 3 equals 0. And let's go ahead and uh, calculate that value. And perhaps I'll do this over here so I don't go off the bottom of the viewing screen. So I'm using... 0.155 amps replacing I3 with this value of 0 0.155 amps replacing right here. So we have 30I2 plus 51 times 0.155 minus 3 equals 0. I've replaced I3 with its numerical value the 0.155 amps. So multiply 51 times 0.155 
and combine that with minus 3 and you get 30i2 plus 4.93 equals 0. Subtract 4.93 on both sides, divide by 30, and you find that I2 is minus 0 0.164 amps. And again, that minus sign tells me that my guess for the direction of I2 was incorrect, that in this middle branch, the conventional current actually goes to the left and not uh, to the right as drawn in the diagram. But that's fine. Um, how do we find I1? Well, I1 is I2 plus I3. So I1 is I2 minus 0.164 plus I3. I3 is plus 0.155. So I1 is small, 0, 0, 0, 0.009 amps is the value of I1. And let's see if some of this can make sense. And again, it's a negative number here. Well, taking a look at the, the batteries here, the 7 volt battery has a bigger resistor, but it is strong enough to drive current to the left through this middle branch. Uh, the 3 volt battery uh, is not hindered by the 7 volt battery down here, so we get a significant current through this uh, bottom branch off to the right. In the top branch, the 7 volt battery would like to push positive current from left to right through here. The 3 volt battery would like to push current from right to left, so they're kind of canceling their effects in that top branch. The 7 volt is bigger, but it has this bigger resistor that limits its ability to drive current through I1 uh, in that top branch. So it's a reasonable number that we get a small current. These two batteries effects kind of cancel each other in that top branch. So that's an example of using uh, Kirchhoff's circuit laws to come up with the current in each branch of the circuit. And again, this, these current exists just starting at one node and ending at another node. Um, we found the current in each separate branch of the resistor using uh, laws of voltage drops and laws of current at a node, and then using algebra to solve three equations with three unknowns. So keep practicing with that and uh, read your book, ask your instructor questions.